But then, this happened. Bang. Hi guys and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. I'm New Neo and let's get right to it. We are back at Minmos with our nice little lander here, collecting all the science we can get with this thing that we landed last episode. And now we're gonna have Jebediah get to the bottom here. There we go, touchdown of the first Kerbal on Minmos. He's gonna take an EVA report and then plant the flag into this nice planet that as a lot of people have said kind of looks like ice cream but definitely is not made of it and we're gonna name the site again the first minmus landing there we go and we're gonna place chap was here and the date with it which is the 18th yes there we go and then we can get back into our capsule and start the voyage home Voyage home that was a Star Trek episode or Star Trek film I guess Well, we're not gonna go that far, but we're gonna have to go from Minmus back home Whoa, and as you can see I've got a little bit of a graphics glitch here That's a problem with the game at the moment. I hope when all the mods will be available for per, uh, version 1.1 that I can upgrade to this one and won't have to haggle with these problems anymore and won't have to haggle with any performance problems. The launch was pretty basic. I set myself into a nice little orbit around the planet and then tweaked a little bit with the maneuver nodes to get back to Kerbin there. And then I let Jebediah do a little EVA to get all these science experiments out of the containers and put them into the capsule because only the capsule of this rocket will be re-entering or will be surviving the re-entry to Kerbin. There we go, nice and done. And then we need to execute our maneuver node when once we got there. It's just a little burn of a few hundred meters per del of Delta V. It's not gonna use up all of our fuel. The which is good, so we can slow down once we reach the planet Kerbin again. There we are, we're done, and then we're time warping to get out of Minmus' sphere of influence here. And once we do that, the orbital info tells us our periaps is at 512 kilometers, so I'm gonna need to bring that down. I'm just gonna eyeball this here between the these two maneuvers, the retrograde and the other one. Sorry, forgot its name, but I'm just gonna burn here. So my periaps goes down to 49 kilometers here. And then I adjust it a little bit here to slow a little bit down and to get the periaps a little bit up again. As you can see, I wanted it to go up here to nearly the edge of space, 67, 68 kilometers. So I could do this once we reach Kerbin. Once uh, I reached 130 kilometers, as you can see here, I burned uh, retrograde all of my available fuel to get my periaps down to just under 50 kilometers. Then activated the chute and let gravity do the rest. This also took a long time because I set the periaps high up so I wouldn't burn up too much of the ablator as you can see. I got down here, the, uh, I really wasn't sure if this was gonna to, going to work or if I would have to do another dip, but the apparaps is dropping fast enough to get myself down to the planet in this first one. We're gonna rise a little bit here from 46 again but the apparatus is steadily declining and so we're not gonna dip out of the atmosphere again. But doing this maneuver is very good for the ablator because you burn off energy in the first dip, then you go up a little bit and as you can see the heat dis uh, dissipates and then you come down again for the second one, for the second uh, landing or for the second dip through the atmosphere, through the thicker part of the atmosphere towards the landing and well when you do this from Minmus or from interplanetary space it's a lot easier on your heat shields 
And the good thing for us is we're gonna land on the daytime side for once. There we have the nice little sun rise as we go over the south pole here. I activated the map to see that that was in fact the south pole. And now the heat is rising again, taking us down to the planet. But we were already below orbital speed that time, so nothing dangerous could happen here. And we are landing very near the shore here, so the Kerbal ships or the Kerbal business people won't have to send the ships very far in to rescue us here. We are already... There we deployed our chute already and we're gonna go down with a nice slow speed to the planet here. That's gonna get us a lot of science that we can then spend and build something cool out of it. And there we have it. I have my first mission with more than one Kerbal here. I put Valentina in, not Jebediah, because this will be a long term mission and I put Bill and Bob in here so they can accompany here on this launch, the first Kerbal Space Station, the KSS is launching here with this nice little viewport on top. I'm gonna show you this launch in normal speed so you can appreciate it. I did put a lot of struts in here to make it very stable but it works perfectly fine. We've got two solid rocket boosters on the outside and the middle are two of the large three and a half meter tanks with a skipper on the bottom, a skipper engine, not the mainsail, the skipper, because it was enough. And this can bring us up to orbit because it's got a total delta V of more than 4300 uh, vacuum delta V. So this could, should get us into a nice little orbit here. This space station itself is pretty basic. We've got the nice little observational module on top with a few lights then a science lab on the bottom, then a service bay. In the service bay there's an inventory inventory hatch and the batteries are in there. And there are also monopropellant tanks in the service hatch. And below the service, service hatch you can see there's the an octagonal structural thingy, <laughs> sorry. Uh, and with on this we've got docking clamps in all four directions and downwards towards the tank so we can modularly upgrade the space with stuff as needed. I hope my science will allow me pretty soon to get some sort of reusable spacecraft going that can put new stuff towards the space station because I want to make this a nice long living space station because I want the first Kerbal Space Station here to last longer than the first one on Earth did. And while we watch this launch, uh, if you like to know a little bit about the first space station, I took a few facts. The first space station was, I believe, a Russian space station called the Salyut 1. I don't know if I'm pronouncing this right. And it was only in space about 170 days or something like that 175 170 something like that it was launched in 1971 and was basically the first test on how to live longer in space like that yeah there we have it the Salyut one launched unmanned from the Soviet Union on April 19th 1971 And a Soyuz 10 started two days later carrying a crew of three towards the space station. So yeah, that was basically the first space station that we had on Earth. Now of course we have the ISS which is a lot better and I want to build my space station out to be a little bit like the ISS so I want a permanent Kerbal I want permanent Kerbal cosmonauts or astronauts to be there depending on where you watch this from and I also want them to do some science do some research uh, later on be a refueling post for interstellar missions like that uh, 
even later maybe have an extraplanetary launch pad. And there I looked a little bit around in the cockpit and I saw this note here. Sorry my, my graphics aren't really working but I can read the PS. I ate all the snacks. Well, I hope you didn't because we brought along some, some tech life support here. And that's good enough for two Kerbal years and 95 days S with f with a full complement of three Kerbals at the moment. So this should be enough to keep my Kerbals occupied and fed for a long, long time. And this mission was going great at this point, but I started to see one little problem here. My engine was starting to heat up and the overheat gauge came up here. So as you can see, my little engine was starting to overheat. I really, really hoped I would get into orbit and really, really prayed for it. But I just could wait here, see how it goes and Hopefully the engine will not overheat on us and I'm gonna go through the rest of the Launch here at four times normal speed until we get to the interesting part. So I basically tried to get my app apps Up and get my time to app apps up as much as possible So I could then do the following mainly shut off the engine when it got too close There we go. I shut off the engine then try to boost with the RCS a little bit to maybe get uh, my time to apparaps a little bit longer. This isn't very much, but it every second here counted. I shut down the engine because I hoped maybe this would let the engine cool off a little longer and let it work a little better afterwards because my periaps was still down below the surface at the moment if my engine would blow up it would be a catastrophic failure because the whole space station would dip back into the atmosphere and would not have any ways of saving my curvils so I really needed to get into orbit here because the space station also has no has no parachutes or any kind of survivability once it dips back into the atmosphere. So I started burning here again because I was nearly at apps, just trying to burn perfectly progress to get my periaps up and to get these kerbals into space. This was very very nerve-wracking here because my as you can see the overheat is still rising and rising and rising. I just hoped it would be enough to get my periaps up before this thing blew up. So I burned a little bit longer here and once it got nearly to the edge I shut it down again and tried to wait another few seconds here for my periaps and then burn again. It's nearly on top at the top now and something very interesting happened here. It didn't blow up. I burned and burned here and had the luck of it not blowing up at the moment. So this worked rather fine. And I got my periaps as you can see up and up and was starting to hope again here because it seemed to be working. But since I didn't want to push my luck too much I put another few seconds of not burning in here so that worked fine my periaps is now at minus 166 or something like that and waited a few seconds for my apps to go uh, time to apps to go at to about 10 seconds and then started to burn very very slowly for as I was hoping this would not generate as much much heat but then started said okay forget it if it's gonna explode it's gonna explode I just need to get my periaps above 70 kilometers here 
And that's what I did and what happened. My periaps is now at about zero. For some reason I shut it off for a second here again. Don't know why I did that and did the slow burn now. Oh yeah, and please excuse me, I pushed the shift key too much so this nice little window, windows, window popped up. But the burn worked and I got my periaps up. There we have it, below, uh, above 70 so we're in orbit. And I got it to nearly be circular. I wanted to burn a little bit more to get myself to a 200 by 200 kilometer. But then this happened. Bang. For some reason suddenly it exploded after it had been working for a few minutes with full heat. And now I'm in an orbit of 146 to 142 with no engine on the space station. But a little bit of fuel in it. So I decided to not ditch the tank. Just keep this thing here. Decided to deploy the lights. As you can see I've got four lights on top just for ambient and one light for each docking port so oncoming ships in the future can identify the docking port even on the night side. Then I activated the Communitron 16 antenna and started to deploy the solar panels here. There we go, three solar panels on either side. That's the first side and where's the second one? There we have it deployed the three solar panels on the other side and that's it for today's episode we're gonna try to expand on the station in the next one and we're gonna send our first interplanetary probe in the next episode i hope i see you guys next time thanks for watching this episode of kerbal space program if you liked it be sure to leave a comment or click that like button and if you never want to miss an episode again be sure to subscribe i hope i see you guys next time